So in C part one, it says find the exact value of f, of f to minus one of 0 0.5. So we put that into our inverse function that we found earlier on, okay? Um, and let's see what that comes out to be. So we'll use our calculator here, okay? And we get, one thirteenth comes out, okay? So you, that's all you've got to do there in that case. Find the exact value of f to minus 1, 0 0.5. So you put it into your function. It comes out there, so you're going to mark it. In part 2, then, it says, by carrying out an appropriate calculation involving f, verify that your answer to c part 1 is correct. Okay, so if you think about it now, right, um, we believe it's correct because we use our calculator and we were careful, but they want us to actually verify it now in part 2 by doing an appropriate calculation involving f. Well, if you think about it, f and f inverse are the opposites of each other, yeah? So if the f of inverse of 0 0.5 gave me 1 13th, okay, well, what I could do now is maybe substitute that into f, okay? So if you think about f of x again, and substitute in the 1 13th in here, and hopefully we'll get out 0 0.5 because it's just to show that they are inverse functions of each other. So we set x to be 1 13th. That's what I'm doing here in, in f. Um, and that's what f inverse does, doesn't it? It gives me a value out from my original domain, from my x values. So 13th, let's see if we actually get then to 0 0.5. Uh, so you've just got to substitute it in. So this is what it means by verifying. So you can just show this process here and put your work in down. And then you type it into your calculator, and hopefully it will come out to be um, 0 0.5. And then that gives you a bit of confidence as well that you've you've probably done your inverse function right. And indeed, I get 0 0.5. Okay, so there, there you go. We've, we've verified it, so we can give it a tick there to show that the inverse function works.